Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Interlinked powered by Shrapnel. A uh, quick update on Shrapnel. They're going to be hosting their Shrappy Holidays event from the 18th of November to the 25th. That's going to include a map update, which I'm excited about. Uh, you know, the old map, we've been playing on it for a while, so it'll be nice to see the facelift there. Uh, two new weapons, I think a new assault rifle and a new pistol, if I'm not mistaken. And the most important for yours truly, controller support, because I was not a mouse and key kid, and I was already sucking at shrapnel and just maybe controller. Or that'll take away my one sort of, like uh asterisks that i only suck because of mouse and key so we'll see uh and they're gonna pack it full of exclusive rewards they're gonna have weapon skins schematics comic books and more so november 18th to the 25th get ready to dive back into the sacrifice zone and we're also brought to you by playable what's up crypto gamers i'm pleased to share i've got some updates on shrapnel First off, in regard to the litigation, they are open to a reasonable settlement, but they are determined to protect their rights in court and share that they have strong lawyers who will be there to protect them. That statement was shared on their Twitter. Now, on the game side, they have a event planned for the end of November where people are going to be able to dive back into the sacrifice zone for seven days straight. This event will be aimed at celebrating the community in the last year that they had, and they're going to pack that week full of prizes. There's going to be digital rewards. There's even going to be physical rewards. I hear rumors about controllers and graphic cards, and there's going to be some updates to gameplay too. So they're going to have Revolver. They're going to have a new AR, and I even hear there's going to be a big announcement that week. So certainly stay tuned for more details. When we have a date to share, we will We'll certainly share it. Huge shout out to our sponsor, Playable Games. They are inspired by gamers and funded by their community. They have a epic game on the Epic Game Store, a third person shooter called Nexus. Hop on in there and check that out. They're also currently selling nodes. So if you're interested, check that out at their website, playable.games. That is a three instead of a B on playable. Now strap in for the rest of this episode of Interlinked. And now let's dive into it. What's going on, Hogshead? How we doing? What's happening, man? I'm excited to have a little one-on-one -on -one chat. Um, you know, I think we had a uh, couple of interesting things. We tapped the all-time high and then went back down. Um, there's some... Uh, interesting things going on in the um sec world i think you wanted to start off with uh immutable x now immutable x is the first gaming token that's gotten a wells notice wells notice meaning the sec sends it out basically saying we're going to sue you and gives you know the the person or the entity a chance to respond I uh, believe there was a phone call that happened and they were discussing the original token launch of Immutable. And then two hours after that call, boom, here's your Wells notice. Uh, and this follows, you know, all the ones that we've talked about before, most notably consensus and, um, you know, obviously Coinbase receiving them. And those are active uh, cases and, I'm pretty sure Immutable X is going to spend, you know, probably equal amounts of money as Coinbase fighting this. Uh, and again, SEC saying that their token is a security and that, you know, they want, uh, you know, everything stopped and lots of money back from uh, Immutable on that. So, you know, that that probably certainly affected some of the market. And uh, what what are you seeing uh, out there in the market today after this little dump? Yeah, on the IMX thing, I'm sort of curious. Did you get a chance to look into it all, like what their token launch was like and if the sort of like accusations of it being launched like a security have any like validity? I, I think their sort of gripe was... Uh, similar to, um, you know, what we saw in XRP where, you know, they're basically saying that, you know, you're 
promising some sort of reward financially to your holders and that the uh, SAFT agreements and all the other agreements that went out ahead of time for the presale uh, were indeed securities. And those securities were not registered because still to this day, you cannot have a normal ICO token launch, go to the SEC and get it registered. That is that has not happened. They've not allowed one registration uh, of that happening yet. So A, you, you can't comply with that. Um, even if you wanted to, or even if some people have tried and, you know, there's no, no response. Uh, and they're saying that, you know, based on current law, that these are securities and you have violated it. So, you know, this goes back to the same thing we've said time and time again, the legislature, Congress has to actually go out and say, OK, here's what crypto is under the U.S. law. Here's who is going to regulate it, which I think is the most important, you know, like which into whether it's the SEC, however it is. And here's the basic outline for that. Uh, and, and, you know, it's probably going to be a new law that they pass. And then once they pass that, you'll have whichever entity that is start the regulation process where they, you know, go to public comment, say, here's the rules we're going to pass. And then, you know, everybody will have letters and, and, and the ability to call in and and say, here's what I think about these you know proposed rules. And then there's the, the comment period. And then after the comment period, then they'll actually publish the rules based on the comments they received. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the fact that IMX has its own wallet is a contributing factor. Because one of the things that the SEC seems to be gunning for is, which we saw with consensus and Coinbase, is anything that's allowing you to self custody seems to be very highly in the like crosshairs of the government. Yeah. What what is um uh, you know a security and having that you know, if you want to call it a specific wallet sort of allows you to hold your tokens, you know, to me, oh, that was one of the, one of the um, main things in the Coinbase, you know, among other things uh, in the Coinbase, um, you know, lawsuit was the actual Coinbase wallet, because what the Coinbase wallet does, and, you know, basically any wallet allows you to go to all of the, you know, decentralized uh, exchanges and they do not like decentralized exchanges because that's where you can essentially send that to anyone. And those anyone could be people that are, you know, obviously out of the country, but could be from, you know, places where we're not allowed to do anything under sanctions and, you know, say all the different uh, countries where there are sanctions, specifically Russia. Uh, and, you know, you can transfer money back and forth and there's no way for them to stop that or really regulate that. And that was one of the things they asked for from consensus was, OK, give me all the IP addresses, you know, where they are and what the, um, you know, the different transactions that happened over time. And so that's one of the reasons why I think a lot of people are saying, get a VPN, make sure you're not, you know, having your IP address out there. And, um, you know, so, yeah, I think the wallet will have something to do with it. At the end of the day, I don't know that you know, there's going to, there'll probably be some, you know, very similar to XRP. There'll be some fine because maybe the initial offering was some sort of security violation. Uh, and then from there, secondary sales, I think will be fine just like XRP and then, you know, move on and we can go along with our day. The question is, is IMX a, you know, a business ongoing business concern and, you know, does their marketing and whatnot, you know, a lot say that, Hey, here's all the tokens, you know, the company held some and the price goes up and now that's how they're getting paid. And was that some sort of, you know, scheme and a security that violated the laws? And, you know, we'll have to see once uh, the actual, you know, briefs are filed and all the motions and we can get further into it once the case is a little bit. Well, once the case actually happens, this is just the Wells notice. So I would imagine within a month or so we'll have that filing. So and then we'll get to go through it. Yeah, no, definitely looking forward to getting your take on it throughout the process as more information on roles. Um, interesting to do it this week. Like you, you'd like that these organizations to be nonpartisan, but it seems like a weird week to issue a Wells notice right before the election. I think we were discussing before we went live, like this is really 
the first election that's had this level of influence coming from the internet. We've also seen how like crypto has been spending extremely highly and Harris was already sort of, it seemed like she had been winning back a little bit of the crypto vote. We had XRP writing big checks. Um, there were a couple like sort of people who were seemingly convinced that maybe she would have a different policy on crypto, but this seems like a weird like what's the what's the upside? Who who are the upside? Who are you winning over by issuing IMX a Wells notice right before an election? Yeah, and, and if I was the boss, who you know, I think we all know Kamala seems to be sort of running everything. I would I would hope she's running everything. Just the last time I saw Biden, I mean, it's kind of a sad situation. But to me, I would call Ginsler and say, "Dude, lay off for three weeks." But, you know, at the same time, you know, Gensler has his own agenda because I think no matter who gets elected, he's out. Mm -hmm. So he's got to say, you know, here's what I did and, you know, work on who, where he's going to land after this. You know, everybody has, sort of has their own individual agenda. Um, but I, you know, personally, I would say, you know, listen, buddy. Let's stop the Wells notices for one week. You can do whatever you want the day after. You know, obviously, because he has sort of the autonomy to run that department, even though it's directly under the commander in chief, which, you know, Biden, I'm sure doesn't, you know, I, I don't know. He probably doesn't know what crypto is at this point. It's just a sad situation. But, you know, it's an interesting dichotomy we have with a sitting president who is, you know, even wore, I think, wore a Trump hat recently in, in uh, one of the videos and called oh, all the Trump that. supporters. It's really funny. Like, he was giving this guy a hat who was wearing the Trump hat. It, it was the president seal hat, and he exchanged it, and they were laughing at him. He put it on for a second, and I was like, <laughs> I mean, it's funny. I, dude, that was great. I think it was funny. It was one of the Good most, content. like, since, yeah, it was like one of the most sincere moments Biden's had in a while, and I, I enjoyed it. Um, and then, you know, calling all the Trump supporters garbage and then Trump coming out with the garbage truck. I mean, so these things are funny. These are all memeable McDonald's and, dude. This is yeah. memeable is the perfect word. Like these it are is. internet memes coming to <laughs> life, like literally being acted out by the most powerful individuals on the planet are acting out memes. <laughs> Like, oh, and one thing, like, while we're on this topic, I'll just sort of, like, get off my chest. Like, stop fucking with comics. Like, Tony Hinchcliffe is a comedian. Like, Whitney Cummings is a comedian. Like, these people who are getting all fucking queefy about what these comedians are saying, like, you just got to chill. Like, these people are just out there they serve an, an essential role in society to point out when the emperor is wearing no clothes to make jokes to poke fun where you're not supposed to like poke fun to like try and like pull them in like there's some senator issuing like their policy uh oh my god that just that that personally just drives me absolutely nuts yes what did you mean by that joke that's very offensive it's like and that's what you know i think snl was you know, that's sort of their role. And I believe it's an extremely important role in our society, you know, based on the mainstream media and sort of where it is now and where X is and this whole weird world we live in to get information in and out. Uh, absolutely. They're, that comic is supposed to be funny. Like, that's the whole point. You're, if you take it seriously, you kind of miss the point. Also, before we move too far away from the Gary Gensler, um, topic i'm going to issue an absolutely wild prediction which i think has a good chance of coming true i think gary gensler works for a crypto company or a crypto like influential campaign within 10 years he gets a fat check from a crypto company and flip sides because you could easily see how people would pay to have him sort of allow them to understand how the sec works from the inside Oh, sure. Uh, it's the same thing as like if you are, you know, an assistant district attorney or a U.S. attorney, like immediately the defense attorney firms are going to hire you. If you are a an SEC lawyer, you know, all the securities law firms hire you when you come out. Uh, and, and remember, he was everyone applauded when he was um, nominated. He was going to be this crypto savior because he taught crypto and everybody was like, man, this is going to be so good. Crypto is going to kill it. And everybody was like, 
maybe not like whoops and, you know, and that was you know, that's happened in Supreme Court, um, you know, nominations over the years where it's like, oh, this is going to be great. This is going to be the most, you know, hard nosed Republican. And then it turns out, well, they have their own minds and their own opinions. And when you sort of let people out, I mean, their people are complex. They're not just going to follow the line every time, which is important. And I think that's, you know, sort of part of the whole political process. And, you know, but that that would be really interesting. I would love to have Gary Gensler go out there i mean that imagine the that token would probably go to infinity because everybody would be like this is this is too funny it's a lock. This is, yeah it would be great he'll team up with sbf when he gets out of jail <laughs> <laughs> lots like cucumber swap <laughs> yeah sbf when he comes out that's gonna be also very interesting oh my god dude i feel like he, he's eventually just going to like the next administration, a couple administrations, like people are going to cool. He still feel, has like some powerful friends. It feels like um, switching, I guess, adjacent to the government topic, just the fact that there's a very likely chance in a couple weeks from now, there could be, it could be all locked up that we're going to have Elon Musk as the department of government efficiency, the doge father, and we're going to have to have the news talking about does regularly. I mean, between that, I did actually end up because we were talking about memes so much in the last few episodes. I finally had to get myself a small doge bag just because then I could stop thinking about memes. And I'm like, OK, if memes take off, this is the easy one that people have heard of, that people will know where to buy. You can get it on Coinbase. I'm like the Elon Musk, like sort of like factor as well. I'm like, I can kind of just like have this and. Even if it goes to zero, it like stops me from having to burn sort of like mind share on memes because I just don't have the bandwidth to get into the meme trenches. Yeah, I mean, look, Doge is double the market value of ADA, which is interesting. Uh, and it's it's stayed. I mean, it's been in the top 10 for as long as I can remember since, you know, years ago. And I think it's a great I think it's a great buy. Uh, and then having the the doge in office is going to be extremely interesting i mean one thing we know you know when when he bought twitter turned it into x and fired a very large percent of the employees everything seemed to be working fine i mean there was nothing majorly wrong with it so apparently there were too many uh employees and obviously we know the government has triple what it needs if not 10 times what it needs so I wonder what the strategic, you know, where to start. Uh, it, it, my guess is it's going to be trillions with a T that gets taken off of our budget within the first few months. Um, but where do you start? Like, which department do you start with? And what kind of package do you give these people? Um, do you have to go through? Because, you know, as a government employee, they have constitutional rights. You need to go through due process to get rid of them. Uh, so it's a little bit different than a private company firing somebody. You have uh, lots of different things to think about, um, but uh, they definitely have the right to fire them. Do they owe them a severance package? It certainly would be cheaper than keeping them on. So it's going to be interesting. And I think Doge itself is going to go up as soon as that happens. Hopefully he gets the Doge hat. <laughs> People are going to get their severances in Doge. <laughs> but they don't even know how to dump. Um, no, it's interesting. And really that like, he is the sort of like, what's the best term for this? He is one of the variables that's going to make a huge difference in where we end up with like the deficit. Cause this doesn't get talked about as, as much. I certainly wasn't aware of it before reviewing Darius Dale's research. Shout out 42 macro, the absolute fucking goats, um, or goat, I should say Darius, um, that, with projections and like what has been sort of the trend of Republican versus Democratic sort of fiscal deficit, the Democrats spend way too much, which is way too commonly, not way too, but is commonly known. But the Republicans contribute to the fiscal deficit by just doing tax cuts that they then don't remove from the budget. You end up in the same place. And so people are, I, I guess, like uh, a couple of analysis is that. I had seen through Darius was that they're projecting three and a half trillion dollars in deficit added for Harris. 
and seven and a half for Trump. Most of those coming from tax cuts. So the only way that you end up in a positive place is because Harris's is probably somewhat accurate, call it three and a half plus or minus a trillion. If Trump, like in order for them just to not add anything, Elon would have to find seven and a half trillion dollars to cut, which I do truly believe is there. But, you know, to the points that you had, like, how do you get rid of these government officials, even if they sweep? I forget which is up for sort of like grabs, the Senate or the House. But like, how do you get a constitutional amendment passed, even if you've got like sort of all these different like pieces of government in order to actually make sort of like sweeping change? Like we're our like our government has become so resistant to change that I think Trump learned that in his first term, like you just can't hack and slash the way you do with a private company. Oh, it's definitely more difficult. I think the last time we actually paid off the debt was Andrew Jackson. Um, <laughs> and yeah, like 1830s. Um, and I believe Clinton was the last time that we actually had a surplus and paid down the debt. So, I mean, that's been 20, almost 30 years at this point. Uh, so, you know, you're a hundred percent right. If you stop taking as much in, but the expenditures are the same or you take more in and the expenditures are, you know, ex, you know, increased, then yeah, there's going to be a debt that we keep sinking deeper and deeper into. And again, I, who knows if it matters really at this point, how deep it is. I mean, what's the difference between 5 trillion and 10 trillion and 20 trillion? It's just a number start, you know, printing more and just, Oh, let's get another zero on this one. This we're fine. It's just yes. math at that point. But yeah, you're right. Republicans definitely are like, oh, we're fiscally responsible. It's like, well, but you need to cut at the same time you take less in and then it would work out. But no one ever cuts. They cut some things, but increase others. And the Democrats cut other things and, and you know, decree. That's always just a shuffle. But the outcome is really the same. Yeah, I love the quote that Darius describes to describes this process. He goes, both sides of the government where both parties practice socialism, the Democrats just practice socialism for the poor and the Republicans just practice socialism for the rich. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was a really clever way of saying it. Um, which, you know, that's where I sort of like end up being like, okay, I just want somebody to come in and shake things up. Cause you're absolutely right. Like people get super hung up now on how big the debt is growing. Like really, it just means we're going to inflate it away. Like we always do. The real issue is the fact like who's going to buy the debt with sovereign nations buying less and less. It's going to have to come from us, the you know American taxpayer, the regular individual or corporations. So you might end up in a situation where the government starts having to mandate private corporations having a certain amount of treasuries on the balance sheet. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, Trump talked about repatriating the debt, which he did la or repatriating your profits. If you have uh, profits in, you know, if you're a U.S. company or you have an operation here and you have a lot of offshore, um, you know, profit, you're going to be able to do that at a lower tax rate. Uh, and that should hopefully bring some expenditures back here. And he's also talking about instead of taxes, sort of Minimal, minimal taxes and raising tariffs on all goods outside of the U.S., which uh, it's a very interesting strategy. But he said, look, I don't want them to stop selling things to us. I want them to build here and use that base of operations to start to start selling us things. And that technically could be a way, you know, if it's strong enough and if people would, you know, not fold on it to force companies to put more capital expenditures back into the United States, which would be great. We could get manufacturing, sort of a lot of different things uh, that that brings up. Uh, and, but you're right, that at least shakes something up. It's something different. What we've done for forever, I mean, is it working? Arguably, maybe, but look at the dollar, look at, you know, the inflation and, you know, why not try something new? What, what could it hurt, right? Yeah, and I think that's like one of the most convincing arguments like that I've heard is, okay, well, the left has had control for 12 of the last 16 years. So if you don't like where we are today, like most likely it's their fault. <laughs> just 
based on pure blind statistics. <laughs> but if you're super stoked about where we are today and you're like, nice, like I love war in Ukraine and things popping off in Korea and China, you know, bullying the Philippines and the Middle East about to pop off in a nuclear war, then like we can keep on trucking. Like this seems to be a good path. <laughs> right. Absolutely. That's great. <laughs> All right. Let's switch gears. Uh, we've got the Whisperer event going on. I know you and uh, Ben, he's away this weekend, but uh, shout out Ben, of course. You guys did quite well. So can you give us a little insight into uh, how you guys were able to crush it so quickly? So the I think the key is uh, having multiple teams that are cool with sharing information. So, you know, shout out to Damon needs to create, Josh Nepper, like both very good uh, you know, shout out to our own interlinked uh, team. I mean, we had a little uh, action going there as well. I think the key is just to think sort of what's the dumbest thing that could happen in here and the simplest way to figure it out and then build off of that slowly because the more complicated things sometimes aren't the answer. Um, you know, I'll, I'll just say if you can move things around and, you know, like, hey, there's a little, you know, scroll thing here. I wonder if we turn it around, what, what would happen, right? There's all kind of different cool hints and, you know, sort of simple things to look at. I think the most complicated are the elite codes, not only how to solve them, but the real key is where they are. And that's, that's I think, the, the number one thing to look at. Um, you know, in the past, they were hidden in videos and this one, they were hidden in videos. Uh, they they could be sort of anywhere. Um, and, you know, founder videos, they were in there, you know, way back in the day, just hidden throughout Alex's and, and Ilya's videos. So, you know, keep your eyes open, but it's fun. I, man, it really, I think this event reminds me so much of the original event and the excitement and, and you know, everyone like, oh, what about this? What about that? And going through, I mean... We had the scrolls. We like cut. I physically cut out the the scroll. Had those little weird shapes, and I was like trying to put them together. So all oh, kind on of the different front of the things. scroll. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm like, this has to be something, it, dude. It's got to be. I think so. I still haven't figured it out, but I think it could be. So shout out to whoever figures that out because it's very complicated. There was lots of different cool things with binary code, and I will say, uh, AI helped incredibly. Whereas last time we didn't have AI and you just had to kind of figure it out. Maybe we did, but I certainly didn't use it this time. Yeah, same here. This AI was, the first was easy. Time. It's like, Oh, binary code here, put this in the binary and 10 seconds later, boom, or vice versa. And you can translate, translate ancient it. Persian or yeah. <laughs> dude, a huge, huge shout out to C's for like the lore, the riddles, like, what an absolute beast like just and i you know i'm a parasite in this instance where i just got to hop into the nxg group and uh follow along on the steps that they saw but i'm glad i did just so that i could experience like holy shit dude like these riddles are so deep like and just to have the opportunity to like it's like i'm reading ready player two right now just read ready player one again like just to have that sort of like experience built for you to try it out and have like the chance to win prizes, I think is just so cool. It is. It's great. Yeah. Shout out to the team that put this together. It, it's amazing. And they spent a lot of time and a lot of effort and it's extremely well done. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to, I guess, tomorrow's our day, right? Yeah. By the time this comes out, phase two is already going to be, you'll with your group you'll probably be done with phase two i'll be by the time this is being released maybe sometime that week and to follow whichever one leaks it <laughs> we'll see i think my yeah my dad's coming into town this weekend and then i'm actually going to be in japan for like 10 days starting uh right around when this episode comes out so it'll just be the two of you guys and some guests while i'm nice. gone but yeah, excited to be able to like follow along. I've I've sort of given up any hopes of like winning. I'm like I'm either gonna buy the whisper from some paper hand if they pull a dug, uh, <laughs> or or just be satisfied with having some fun along the way. Um, but yeah, yeah shout speaking out to of speaking of Doug, what do you think the highest offer is going to be immediately after the win? I'm curious. Oh, that's interesting. D like when that. 
last one transacted when the Doug sale happened, that was like at the lowest like sentiment that I've seen. Now, sentiment is sort of this like oscillating tide like thing that like there's going to be low moments. It's hard to imagine it hitting the low then. Plus, you've got people like race. There's just enough like NT whales that I think have long time conviction. I'm going to be shocked if that moves for less than 100K. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> and if it moves for less than 100K, it might be moving to my fucking wallet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that thing is sick. I'm really excited to be able to see what it looks like. And I'm excited yeah. to hear. I think this might just be a rumor, but we heard it from. Uh, the dark lord himself that there's two more yeah so i think seven is in the lore that you watch there's the seven you know spots so yeah i would think so damn and with the pace of like one a year that's crazy to think about 2026 <laughs> what is our space gonna be like by 2026 hopefully we've got more six games than uh that are currently available. I think off the grid, actually, to shift gears a little bit, it's going to be interesting. We're going to, like, by next week, really by the end of November, is going to be interesting to see how many people come back from Black Ops 6 to off the grid. Because currently it's in its, like, most hype stage. My brother, for instance, I haven't talked to him in, like, a week because he's been just straight grinding camos, grinding guns, like... But once you hit that and once the battle pass is done, it'll be interesting to see if people flow back to OGG. Yeah, and I'm I mean, I enjoy it. I, I don't play I haven't been able to play a lot. I've been really busy, but the only thing I played in the last week was off the grid. Uh, well, I say that I still play Clash Royale. That's still my like favorite. If I'm Let's just go. sitting somewhere for a few minutes, I'll play it. Um and I I started that game probably within the first month of it coming out. So I've played that for years. Oh, you're an OG, dude. Yeah. I'm mad. I'm like fully maxed and have been for a long time. Other than, you know, the new level 15s, I'm still working on that. But um, I've got all the cards, you know, it's fun. I, I love that game. Yeah, this week I got in a few OTG games with a buddy, Web2 buddy. He's still been ripping. Um but definitely a lot of the people who I was playing with went and shifted to COD. I haven't played multi outside of the beta or the alpha, whichever it was that came out early. And I've just been playing the campaign, which I just beat the campaign, which was, you really do get like a reminder of like, oh my God, this is what a billion dollar budget can do in a campaign. Like I was playing it on PC. I don't have anything crazy. I've got like a 3080 or 3070. But I'm like, oh, my God, dude, this is fucking beautiful. Like, I can't by 2026, I don't even know what campaigns are going to be like. And then Black Myth Wukong, which is so fun, is as fun as it is frustrating. Like, I've been literally working on this one boss. Felix, if you're watching this, I killed the freaking Thunder Wind Rat. Uh, but <laughs> I literally had to go back because you can travel <laughs> in it. And I was like, OK, I got to go back to the beginning of this, like, stage and just work through it again so i can gain enough experience to maybe beat this guy and just like once you get beaten like 10 20 30 times you're just in a rut and i'm like i gotta figure out a way to break that break this rut oh yeah you get tilted man and then you're just like i don't care i'm gonna go right in and attack him directly and then you get killed instead of being tactful and yeah it all it always happens like that but you know that's the game loop. That's that's fun though. That, man, I love campaigns. Campaigns are always my favorite part. Me too, dude. I've always loved campaigns. Um, now, curious, what are before we wrap up? What are your curious like current vibes right now on the general market? We were talking in down only. Then we were at the top of the range. I'm like, okay, let's see if if this dog hunts and. Now we've gotten a rejection. We're below 70K again. I think you had some interesting thoughts that uh, Elliot lately has been a top signal. So I'd be curious to hear what are your vibes like right now? Yeah, so I saw the Alex video that came out when he's like, all right, we're good. And then I think he posted again as another joke, like we'll never see 60 in the 60s again. And then maybe Elliot posted that too. And then I watched Elio's video, you know, I, right when it came out. And what, the first comment I noticed was, why 
every time you post a video, do we shit the bed? And I was like, <laughs> man, that is so true. At the at, it's like the end of those tiny ranges, he posts it and then boom, it goes down. I think the same thing happened last time. Uh, but I'm feeling, you know, I think it's ready to explode. I really feel that I'm I'm shocked that it hasn't, you know, gone through the all time high. I know that's a huge, a huge, uh, you know, line of resistance. It's got to get through. Um, but I, I'm thinking, it, you know, if Trump wins, I think it'll smash through it. If if Kamala wins, I think we'll go down and, and eventually go back up. But um, I'm thinking it's really going to uh, shoot pretty high that would maybe be a good time to take some profits if trump wins would be my thought because you know i don't think it'll last more than a week or two then it'll come back down i mean it'll start going up slowly but that rocket would be a good time to get out buy back within a day or two i'm thinking that may be my strategy no that's interesting i think like no matter what no matter who gets elected the market's gonna like the clarity like right now, like even though he's like crashing in the poly markets, the polls are a lot tighter and like this shit's not going to be over. The worst is like this shit's not going to be over probably till what's election day, the fifth. Yeah, it's going to be uh, Tuesday. It's probably not going to be over until like the fucking ninth, like at right. the rate that some of these states are being like, oh, we can't count our votes over like four or five days. Which is like crazy. I think like Taiwan counted their votes in like four hours or something like that. And we're like, we're number one. But even and like also the like thing that drives me crazy is we're getting more electric and it's taking longer. Right. I'm like, this is an expel like spreadsheet. Like it should just spit out the answer. Like ask chat GPT, how many fucking yays? How many nays? Like what? That drives me crazy. But I think the market loves clarity. And either way, even let's say if it takes to the ninth or the 10th, like on the backside of that, the market's going to readjust. Like at the end of the day, I don't think we go into a like financial, like nuclear winter or something. If like Kamala comes in, like at the end of the day, like I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference to like the overall sort of like market. Um, I think the Trump pump could be very real. I think the dynamics going into Q1 at least are looking very strong just from like sort of like a fundamental liquidity standpoint. We've got a debt crisis coming up, a debt ceiling, like TGA is super high. That's going to have to get spent down most likely if it follows like sort of like the past trend. So, you know, it's always a fucking crapshoot. I'll just say where, you know, my mind's all over the place, but my money is... I'm fucking long right now. I'm pretty much like maxed out longer than I've been in like a while. Now that's terrifying because we're looking at like close to all time highs and pretty much everything I'm in, like the majority of my assets are in like Bitcoin, the spy and like gold. And then I've got like an alt portfolio, um, mostly focused on like gaming. Biggest L of the year easily for me was AI. I caught the mm. absolute fucking top of AI. I think I'm down like 80% or something on some of those positions. I open up that portfolio app and I just cringe. I'm like, oh, you've been around the space for long enough that you should not have gotten pulled into like max FOMO at the end when AI had already pumped like 10, 15 X, but just another lesson from uh, another cycle, right? Oh, it's so hard not to. And everyone's like, AI is the answer. AI is the solution. AI is taking over everything. And you're like, oh, this is great. I can just put all my money in these cool tokens that are probably vaporware. But, you know, when some of them start actually producing something, those particular tokens are going to be so unbelievably high. I'm really excited for that. When we actually have something that is actually doing something amazing. Brother, I hope so, because every decision I made since like essentially the FTX crash where I put money into anything besides Bitcoin has been a big fat fucking L. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a couple like two X's and stuff in there. Like I made some good I still in the black on like Beam and Super and like a couple other things and Doge and Solana. But all of the fucking dirty alts that I got into anything below like the like top hundred, I got fucking wrecked. So. It ain't over till it's over. We'll see if we'll get an alt rotation. I do tend to think like the scary thing that keeps me up at night is I'm like, okay, now that there's these Bitcoin ETFs, like, is there going to be 
a on-chain rotation or are people just like not going to go past Coinbase and their brokerage account because they don't have to? Yeah, I was wondering the other day if it was going to be like Bitcoin and then just skip all the way down to memes and the middle part is going to be, you know, sort of lacking. But but again, that may be sort of where the gold lies if you have some of those mid caps and, you know, the ones that may actually start doing things and utility type tokens. But I was thinking that the other day, I'm like, it may just be Bitcoin and memes and that everything else in the middle is just sort of, ah, eh, we'll get there. Like where Ethereum is, right? Maybe it all sort of becomes like an Ethereum and just underperforms to everything else. Dude, let's go. What do you think? Is Ethereum due for a catch up or is Ethereum dead? It still has so much locked. I think the, you know, the the key to Ethereum is that not a lot of people are playing on it. I mean, obviously we do for Neo Tokyo. Um, but beyond that, I don't really do much with it. Although if you think about it, sort of all the EVM chains like Avalanche, all the ones that use those same addresses, um, you know, and the layer twos, those are still there. They're still active. Lots of things happening on them. So, you know, does that really just pump the layer two or does Ethereum still have sort of a holding power, um, you know, with all the layer twos and all the work that are happening to it? I think it's got to be due for a catch up, though. I mean, it's 2,500. It should be more like 4,000 right now um, or higher. And we did see this dynamic with the Bitcoin ETF where... It was sort of like this big pump into the ETF. Then it was like a sell the news event. And it took a while to accumulate before then going on to make like sort of like new highs or at least catching up to the old highs. So, you know, if that sort of like, if that on-chain rotation doesn't come, you have to imagine that that is a huge benefit to ETH because you can get ETH on any sort of exchange. Plus now you can get the ETF exposure. Yeah, and I haven't looked at the ETF inflows for Ethereum, but I imagine that's, you know, it's not not enough to do much if we're still at 2500 today. Um I'm I'm sort of shocked when the ETF came out that it just sat there and didn't do anything. You know. Although it could be I, the IOU sort of thing that we've discussed true. before, like yeah. perhaps like these big brokerage accounts are being able to buy them without having to actually have the I don't know. That's sort of my conspiratorial like part of my mind where like I'm like, okay, how are all these inflows taking place but it not affecting the price? Yeah, imagine if we had a Solana ETF. That would be man, I could that would be like a skyrocket. So that tells me that Ethereum is just lagging and may continue to lag just because of the narrative on it. Everyone's it's too expensive, it's too slow, it's old. Plus, I, I have to like for NT plays like the new gaming arm of Neo Tokyo, big plug. If you're out there and you play games and you want to win prizes, join the Discord, join NT plays. But I have to make the prize distributions on ETH because bytes are on ETH, all these other tokens are on ETH. And it fucking sucks. And it's not even in like the bull market. And I'm like, God damn, like you're paying like at best like a couple bucks to send like 50. I'm like, oh, that, that is painful yeah man the fees i remember you know back in 2021 and i forgot which token came out and it showed you um you know there was an airdrop i think of how much you spent on gas and i was like oh that's that's ridiculous oh i don't even i don't like to open those boxes. and then the it's other so side scary. how much was spent on that that was like the you know one of the largest gas wars in the history of eth what a waste honestly Except for, we like, should, I guess, unless you're a miner. We should get somebody from the ape chain on uh, the pod sometime soon. It seems like they've been doing a lot of cooking over there. Um, I, obviously, the price had, like, an absolute fucking rocket not too long ago where it got boosted back over a dollar, maybe hit, like, a dollar fifty. I'd been having an ape bag that had just been eviscerated and turning into dust. So it was nice to watch that do something. Uh, but it'd be good to get an update from the ape chain, maybe the journey, some of the journey team or something. But uh, yeah, that's a that's a great idea. That's pretty much all I got. Anything uh, on your end, Hogshead? Before we wrap, no, I'm I'm just pumped that we're here, and you know this this actually may come out the same day as the election. So go Kamala, go Trump. Hope each of you good luck in the election, and 
I really wish Kamala would have gone on Joe Rogan. That's the only thing I have to say. I think that would have, I, I, you know, you'd see who she is, and I think that would have helped her campaign, honestly. I think that was a bad move. Yeah, no, I, and I saw a lot of people being like, oh, wh it's not fair to think that she should travel to Joe Rogan and spend a couple hours on his podcast the week of the election. I'm like, okay, name another event that you can reach more people. Oh yeah, it doesn't exist. Like if your goal is to reach as many people as possible, as many voters, then there's no better use of your time than going on the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, and I think she also took some days off too. Like you could have picked one of those to go. I mean, he invited her a while ago. We will see. Um, yes. Any prediction? If since this will come out on Tuesday, who's going to win? I honestly think Trump is going to win. I think you know the the tide has turned. Um, that's just my prediction. Could totally be wrong. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to be in Texas that night watching the results, but I am going to FaceTime my son because he'll be 13 and he's really excited about the election to see what happens. So oh, that's it'll cool. be a fun, it'll be a fun moment, even though we're not together. So, oh, but I, I think Trump's going to win. Yeah. I think Trump's going to win as well. I am tempted to put a fucking huge bet on Kamala on the poly market because <laughs> that I feel like would hedge my position. Everything's like positioned for the Trump pump. And that way I'm like, okay, I could at least hit a three X on poly market if Kamala <laughs> wins, but I probably won't bet. end up pulling the trigger on that. It's an interesting bet. It's a good call. <laughs> All right, Jared, absolute pleasure to be on here with you. This has been another episode of Neo Tokyo Interlinked. And we will be back next week with another episode. Take care, everybody.